Welcome back to another episode of the Parenting Reframe Podcast. So today I wanted to hop on and do a mini-sode and I want to I want to basically reframe how we approach kids who struggle to separate, kiddos who have separation anxiety. So this comes up a lot, certainly this time of year as kids go back to school, bedtimes change, um, kids have to be away from a parent and maybe they didn't have that or maybe that wasn't their situation through the summer. So what do we do? It's incredibly taxing as a parent when we have to drop our kids off at school and they're bawling their eyes out or if you need to leave them with somebody a babysitter um, a grandparent your partner in some cases a child will be very attached to one parent or the other and at the end of the day it's a really unsustainable process if we constantly accommodate it so today what I'm going to do is just give you the script that I would teach a parent in a coaching session it's actually the exact same thing that I did when my kids were younger Uh, just for context my son he didn't care at all he was not very attached in that way he was pretty easily adjusted to different situations and didn't have a hard time so we could drop him off he would be fine he'd be excited when we got there he didn't really that wasn't really his struggle But my daughter, on the other hand, if she could have it her way, she would have Velcroed herself to me and we would have continued our day that way. So it was hard. And so I can understand it from the lens of the parent because I would feel awful leaving her and watching her cry and feeling like I was not doing the right thing, going somewhere or not just choosing to sacrifice my plans and to just stay home with her. There were times when I did do that because I felt so terrible and the guilt got the best of me. So I want to walk you through what I ended up doing, how I help other parents work through it, what I've seen be pretty successful and where the traps are. So let's just start off with number one. What we tend to do is that we anticipate the moment of upset. So what does that mean? Like, okay, I'm going to drop them off at school. They've already been complaining to me since last night saying they don't want to go to school. They wish they didn't need to go to schools or anyway, school is canceled, right? The the stress for our kids starts way before the moment of drop off. So what starts to happen to us if we're not aware of it is we are now getting worked up with our kids. We're escalating with our kids. We're dreading drop off to the same extent that they're dreading drop off. So recognize what's coming up for you because here is the thing. Your kids are going to be fine, right? When we drop them off at school, we know they're okay. If they're not and there is something going on at school or a babysitters or something like that, that's a completely different conversation. But we're all, you know, operating under the assumption that you're dropping your kids off at school. They end up having a great day. They're well taken care of. They're having fun. They're adjusting just fine to their school day. We're talking about that moment of saying goodbye and the build up to that moment. So you know, remind yourself and just say to yourself, I'm a good parent. I have to have my child experience this time of separation. I have to have my child go to school or attend this certain thing or go to their grandparents or hang out with their other parent. I am not doing anything wrong. In fact, I want you to go a step further beyond I'm a good parent. And I want you to say, I'm helping my child become more resilient. I'm helping my child learn how to trust to themselves. I'm helping my child better understand how to trust their environment. Those are really important skills. And when we're always with our kids and we prevent that from happening because we feel bad that they're going to feel bad, we miss opportunities to allow them to adjust to whatever the challenge is. So first and foremost, Get yourself in a good headspace and remind yourself of that. Struggle, challenges, pain, sadness, as hard as those things are, they're not bad, quote unquote. We need the contrast of good and bad. We need the contrast of like what was challenging so that I could get resilient, become more competent, gain confidence. You don't just get that handed to you through compliments, right? Those things are gained and they're only really gained through a little bit of grit and struggle. So remind yourself that your child will be okay despite how big their emotional outburst is. That's okay. They're allowed to feel however they feel. It's our job to steer the ship and to remind them that we see them, we validate the way that they're feeling, but that we know they're going to be okay we place them in safe environments and that we are so looking forward to seeing them when we get back. So this is what it looks like. You remind your child that I know it's hard, right? We name the thing they're going through. I know it's hard to leave mom or I know it's hard to leave dad or I know you don't want to be away from me and I get that. I feel that. But you are going to be okay 
and I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be at work or I'm going to be doing A, B, and C. You're going to be doing this and this and this with this person or maybe you are going to be hanging out with grandma and you're going to have a really great time and I'm going to be doing what I need to do and I can't wait to hear about what you did this afternoon when I come back to get you. As much as you can, if you can lay out a predictable plan for them, that's going to be helpful. So mommy will be gone for this amount of time. You're going to play with grandma and grandpa. You guys are going to do some cool things. I'm going to be doing this. If you absolutely need me, you can call me. You have my number. And then at this time, I'll be picking you up, right? It's important that they have some structure, some predictability around it, particularly if you have a child who leans a little anxious, right? There's some anxious underpinnings around that separation, but... What you don't want to do is you want to resist joining the sad party. You know, sometimes I call it the pity party. So what does this mean? A lot of times when our kids are like, I'm so sad. I wish I could stay home with you forever. I wish I didn't have to go to school. I wish I could just hang out with you and play and watch movies and this, that, and the other. It's so tempting for us in that moment to go, I know, I'm so sad too when I'm not with you. It's my favorite to hang out with you too. And I love laying on the couch and watching movies with you. Or I love playing with you in the backyard. Or I love doing this. And we kind of start to join them. The problem with this, and it's not that that's not a beautiful thing to say to your child, but it almost validates what they're saying. Like, see, school is bad. Work is bad. Why are we doing these things? It forces us to be separate. We don't want to be separate. My mom doesn't want to separate from me either. This isn't just my battle. So it's really important that we don't misrepresent what we're intending to say in that moment. So if it were me, I would just empathize. Like I would say, oh, I get it. I know it's so hard sometimes to say bye to mommy. And it's hard for me too. But guess what? So many cool things happen when we're not together, just like so many cool things happen when we are together. You want to remind them of the importance of that time, not just for them, but for you. We want to show our kids what it looks like that their parents have a life outside of being a parent, particularly mothers, right? And a life that they love, a life that they enjoy. So where this can get a little bit murky is when I work with a parent, a mother in particular, and she may have plans. Maybe she's doing a girl's trip. Maybe she's going out to dinner with some friends and she just really needs that time, right? So she's made plans, she's excited to go, you're looking forward to that adult time, and all of a sudden you're getting ready to leave and your child is on the ground, puddle of emotions, crying, bawling, begging you not to leave. This is really taxing and this is really hard and there are times where I've worked with a parent where they'll say, I will cancel plans, I will stay home, it's not worth it, she's not going to sleep all night, she's going to struggle, my husband doesn't know how to calm her down, right? There are all these things we say to ourselves so then it what ends up happening is it ends up working to some extent. And this is the worst part about it is when we do that, two things happen. Our kids see, oh man, like I I thank God I can do that. And then she'll change her mind and she'll stay. And I don't have to endure the hardness of what it feels like to be without her for that period of time. The other piece of it, or him, because I know some kids are really attached to their dads too. The other piece of it is that when we do that, It doesn't show our kids that we trust that they have what it takes to get through it. Remember, we are teaching our kids how to be resilient. We are teaching our kids how to navigate a challenge, that we believe that they can do it. We know it's hard. We all agree that it's hard. We recognize that it's hard, but that they've got this. They can do it, that they are safe, that they are loved, that they are held, right? That there is this deep belief in them and faith in them that they will be just fine, that they're going to be able to work through it. And it might be hard and it might take more than one day, two days, three weeks, four weeks, right? But that they can do it. So that's what we're trying to communicate in that moment. We don't want to join them and allow their sadness to come into our kind of sphere. And then all of a sudden we're all sad, everybody's sad, and it just miscommunicates what we're trying to really get at, which is raising a child who will eventually become successful at being independent, right? That's sort of what we want, a child who's resilient, well-adjusted. You can leave them different places with trusted caretakers and you know that they're going to be okay and that they can manage that challenge if that's a challenge for them. They can work through it. But the, every time we take an opportunity away, it just gets harder and harder. So the last thing I want to end on, once we know all those pieces, getting your mind right, stating and empathizing with them and stating the feeling that they're feeling, but then reiterating what to expect. 
and then we leave, we want to make sure our kids see that we were fine without them, just like you trust that they're fine without you. It's really important that we reconnect at the end of that period of time and explain what happened and talked about what happened and talk about what happened and really work through it. So that's going to be really critical. And the last thing is really acknowledge your internal dialogue. The same way you're going to express empathy for your kids when they're feeling sad about it, I want you when you are alone and reflecting, I want you to say to yourself, it feels awful when I have to leave my daughter and she's crying. It made me not enjoy my dinner with my friends. It was so taxing to see her that way. And here I was making a plan for myself. Makes me feel selfish, right? I want you to really be honest about these things. And I want you to take a look and see where is that coming from? Right, Because usually this is a great place to implement PAR. That's the four-step process that I teach of pause, acknowledge, respond, reflect. So we can really get to the bottom of those unconscious beliefs we hold on to about what it means to be a quote-unquote good parent, good mom, good dad, whatever the case is. These things are often formed, these unconscious beliefs, by culture, societal kind of norms, um, the way we grew up maybe the way we were parented or the way we weren't parented, but we wished we were, there's a lot to it. So if we're going to walk around saying, oh, I went to dinner with my friends and I left my daughter at home crying, that must mean I'm a bad mom. I'm pretty selfish because a mom who is selfless, which is generally the attributes we assign to quote unquote good moms, would have canceled her plans and stayed with their daughter and made sure she was calm and okay. That's my job as a mom. Sacrifice, sacrifice, martyr, martyr, right? Those are the things we have adopted. Those are the unconscious beliefs we hold on to. But guess what? Then we continue to raise a next generation of kids who believe the role of parent and the role of mother is martyrdom, right? That all our role is is to serve and please and take care of them and everyone else but ourselves. I, for one, don't want to teach my daughter that. I, for one, want my daughter to see that I have this balance between taking good care of my family but also taking care of myself because it's a priority. So recognize what that internal dialogue is and what it's saying to you so that way you can navigate through it. You can reflect on it. Ask those questions. Where is this coming from? Where did I adopt this mindset? Is it true? Is it true that you're selfish if you enjoy a night out with your friends? It is not right? It is not. Would you want the same for your daughter when she becomes older and has a family of her own if that's the path she chooses? You wouldn't. So really sit with that, recognize that, show yourself grace. The more you can do this practice, the more you can walk through these steps, the better and better it will be because you will be grounded in that process. And the more dialed down you can stay when they escalate, your child will begin to recognize quicker and quicker how they can also manage those emotions find that steady ground under their feet, and they can get through anything. So I hope that helps. If you have specific questions or ever wanted to dive deeper, you can certainly reach out. You can either email me or just feel free to book a free call to see if my two-month coaching program is right for you. So until next time, I will see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever it is that you're listening right now. And what really makes my day is if you share or recommend the podcast to a friend, it is the greatest compliment. If you have not already, head on over to theparentingreframe.com where you can subscribe to get my weekly newsletter, Parenting Skimmed, 10 sentences delivered to your inbox every Thursday to help you parent and live a better life. It's for the parent who constantly told me, I just don't have time to read. Make sure to come and say hi to me on Instagram at theparentingreframe. My DMs are always open and I love hearing from you. Until next time, this is Albiona. Biona.